Okay, the Sargent 6300. This is Sargent's proprietary large format interchangeable core. They came out with this in the late 70s. Uh, and it's not their only core. They've actually got four designs. This is their most recent design though, and that's why sometimes you'll hear it referred to as the new style core. Here's a, another one of their older cores. This one's called an old style. It's not technically an interchangeable core. It's a removable core. Uh, and if I had to guess, this will be the subject of a future video. And speaking of videos, I'm not going to discuss how to create pinning charts for the 6300 because I've already done that before. I'll include a link to that video and to uh, some additional articles and literature related to these 6300s if you wanted to learn a little bit more than what I'm going to tell you in this short video. But the Sargent 6300, it has a control lug in the third and fourth chambers. And just as with any interchangeable core, you insert a control key, you turn the key. In this case, we're gonna turn it counterclockwise to retract that lug. See, retracts into the rest of the core. And we insert it into the housing, turn the key back to the key pull position, and we are locked in. And then, in this case, this is a mortise cylinder. We can just turn, and there we go. Now, I said that it's in the third and fourth chamber. Here's one from the factory. This is how they come with these clips. These clips have really no function to them. They just hold it in place during the shipping process. So if you ever see one, don't think, oh, what is this? What am I supposed to be doing? Nothing. So real quickly, comes apart we've got a plug just like any other cylinder but here's where the fun begins here's our control sleeve and there's the control lug and as you can see we've only got two chambers cut out because it's for the third and fourth right there as you can see there's one and two here and five and six in the rear so what that means is we only have to worry about a control formula, build-up pin, all that good stuff in two chambers, which is pretty nice. And I will demonstrate this real quick before I kind of go a little bit further. I've actually pulled it apart and got some pins in here. So as you can see, third and fourth, these are the quote-unquote control chambers. I'm going to put the operating key or the change key in here and as you can see I've blocked the shear line at the or I blocked the control shear line so I can rotate my plug and not have to worry about the control lug retracting I mean that's basically how most interchangeable cores work so I've got that key out now I'm going to put in my control key as you can see the pins are at the shear line here so I can't move this because those bottom pins are extending beyond the plug so when I turn the key it's going to pull that lug in so that's basically how they work. And if you want to know the math behind that, I've got a video on it. But um, if you just want to know the function of it, that's that's basically how it works. We've got two shear lines, just like with a small format interchangeable core. You either want it to go to the operating shear line or up here with the control shear line. And unlike uh, Sergeant, or I'm sorry, unlike Corbin Russell or small format, uh, we've only got two chambers we've got to work and worry about. Very similar, I guess, in some respects to the Medico 32 series, which also has a uh, control log in the third and fourth chamber. So, sorry it's not familiar to you, perhaps Medico is. Let's see if I can get those pins back in there. Get lock into place. So, let's talk about the control keys for a little bit. They're going to contain the same cuts. Of course, this is a this is not a good example, but this is uh, these are factory biddings. When they ship from the factory, they've only got two chambers pinned up, the third and fourth. 
and uh, this is the operating key and this is the control key. But in a normal properly coded core, the control key is going to have the same cuts as either the operating or change key or the top master key in all positions except three and four. So one, two, five, and six are going to be the same between the top level key, the top master key, the change key, whatever, and the control key. The reason they do that is because, well, there's no sense in complicating things further than they need to be. If the only difference is in the third and fourth chamber, well, that's where you keep your cuts different. The coded difference, and I'll kind of go back here, this portion right here, this is the coded difference between the two shear lines, this brass portion right here, because obviously we're at the shear line here and up here as well. So this distance right here is 160 thousandths of an inch, which is basically eight increments in Sargent's key bidding specification. So what this means is that there exists certain biddings that can't be used. In other words, operating or change key or master key and control can't use certain biddings or key interchange possibilities exist. And what I mean by that, a master key functioning as a control key or a control key functioning as a master key. So that's not a good situation. Sargent avoids this at the factory because they don't use depths one and two for control key biddings and they don't use depths nine and 10 for top master key biddings in the third and fourth position. So if you follow those rules, you'll be fine. But because of the coded distance between that shear lines or these shear lines, it, it bears repeating or mentioning that uh, you have to be careful. You just can't go in there flippantly and, and pick biddings if you're wanting to cut some keys and introduce these into a system or whatever. A um, few other things. Sargent uses the uh, 20 thousandths of an inch key bidding specification. That's got depths one through 10, which is shallowest through deepest. I know I said one through 10. Sometimes you'll see it um, listed one through zero. That zero is just the 10th depth. Uh, these only come in um, six pin versions. So you can't get like a five or seven. They're only in six pins. As far as I know, that's all they've ever been offered. Um, there's a version of the Sargent Signature in Sargent Degree that'll fit this 6300 profile. One other thing too, on some of the older ones, I'll show you this one as well. Some of the old ones from the factory, the keyway, it's very faint and hard to see, but in this case, HL is the keyway. And here is the direct bidding. So on some of these from the factory, they let you know you know, here's the keyway you need to use and here are your cuts. So come right from the factory, no guesswork, no disassembly, decoding, anything like that. But other than that, that's there's really not much to these in terms of servicing, but there is one noteworthy change throughout the product's history, and that's the introduction of hollow drivers. And that's what I'll pretty much spend the remainder of the video talking about. The 6300 uses two different stack heights. For non-control chambers, again, one, two, five, and six, the uniform stack height is 15. For control chambers, it's 20, because we've got to find a way to block that control shear line from above with top pins. Otherwise, there'd be nothing preventing it from rotating when you're using an operating key, for example. So with that extra bit of metal or the pins up here, our spring is gonna be a little bit more compressed than it would be in the non-control chambers. So Sargent came out in 2009 with hollow drivers. I'll try to show you as best as I can. You can actually see that a portion of the driver is cut out. And that is so 
that the spring can fit in to the driver rather than on top of it. See, it's in there. So that little bit of extra room for the spring, for lack of better words, uh, cuts down on that premature spring wear that was notorious with a lot of the older ones. Well, I wouldn't say notorious, but I wouldn't say it was abnormal. It happened. Um, it's not so much to prevent crushed springs, because actually you can see right here, I'll, I'll compress this one fully. See, we are compressed fully here, and I'll let go. And it springs back, for the most part, to its original size. That's not really what they are worried about. And I'll tell you what they're worried about kind of in a side tangent. In the firearm community, a lot of new and inexperienced shooters like to think that if I load my rifle or pistol's magazine with rounds and compress the spring in that magazine fully and put it in my gun safe for two, three, six, 12 months, that I'm going to damage the spring in there. I'm gonna wear it out because it's gonna be fully compressed the whole time. That's not what causes compression springs to wear out. Compression springs wear out through repeated contraction, expansion, contraction, expansion, so on and so forth. That's what we're worried about here in these as well. When that key gets inserted, as the pin stacks move along the blade, it's compressing and expanding or contracting and expanding just like that as the key's done or inserted. So that's happening about, I don't know, at least four times in the third position at least. So as that happens, that spring's wearing out over time. So by using hollow drivers, if we can limit how far they can contract and also expand, we're reducing the amount of potential wear, not by much, but by some enough to prolong the lifespan of the spring and the operation of the cylinder. So that's why they went to the hollow design, hollow driver design. Uh, as you can see, if you care, four to 11 top pins. They've actually got a little bit more, but uh, the other ones you really don't use much, so I didn't even include them in this kit. They do make a dedicated kit, but I just, I threw this one together myself because uh, we do a lot of sergeant work and um, I know what kind of what we would need, but they do sell dedicated kits if you were looking to get it, but this is ours. And one other thing I mentioned, or I will mention, and I'll have a link to this in the video description, if I can get it out. And these come in the box. Sergeants, unlike anybody else, and that they're nice enough to include some instructions with you. And on the back, they're even nicer because they've got a pinning worksheet to assemble a pinning chart, which is pretty cool. I'll include a link to this in the video description. I'll also include a link to some of the pinning worksheets at Lock Reference because we have both the uh, a pinning worksheet and a decoding worksheet for these. So if you're interested in tinkering with them at home or in the shop or learning a little bit more about them before you start servicing them in the field, plenty of resources at your disposal to do that. Uh, but other than that, that's the video. Next one's gonna be this beast, the old style Sergeant Corps, which is actually very cool. Uh, a lot going on back here and we'll talk about that in the next video. But for now, thanks for watching.